Yo, yo, what is up, guys? It's Cohen back here again tonight with another video. Another recap of the NBA games. I'm not going to talk about every single game tonight just because there were some that I really don't have much to say about. In particular, I don't have much to say about Kings, Spurs, Rockets, Nets, uh, Knicks, Timberwolves. Not really games I have a lot to talk about there. Um, maybe I could go through them a little bit at the end, but mainly what I want to focus on in this video is the Western Conference playoff picture, and particularly the teams at the top of the Western Conference. Many of them played today, uh, particularly I want to focus on the Lakers, Suns, and Jazz, but also I want to talk a little bit about the Los Angeles Clippers and two other teams that played today, the Mavericks and the Trailblazers. And the reason I want to talk about all those different teams is because it feels like the Western Conference is really wide open right now. And I know I'm going to say that, and it's going to end up coming to bite me in the butt when the Lakers inevitably run through the Western Conference when AD and LeBron James get healthy. But as they're, as they're hurt, this Lakers team continues to show its flaws when they're not there. Uh, obviously, they'll, or hopefully, they will be there for their playoff run, but they're going to be coming back off some injuries, and so nothing feels guaranteed in the West this year. I've talked a lot about how wide open the Eastern Conference feels, but obviously the Nets are the team there to beat at the moment, uh, taking the number one seed tonight with their win over the Houston Rockets. The 76ers also a threat there in the Bucks, but I feel like it's those three teams against the world. Out West, I feel like there's like four or five teams that I could see realistically making a deep run into the Western Conference playoffs or even winning the West. And a few of those teams played tonight, so I want to give a shout out to them and I want to talk about why it feels like the West is so uncertain this season. Go ahead, drop a like, drop a subscribe if you like NBA content like this. It comes out pretty much every single day. And I'll just go ahead and get into it. The first team I want to talk about is the Utah Jazz. They are the number one seed right now. One by four points against the Grizzlies tonight after that scary plane incident just yesterday. Um, hoping everyone's okay. I know Donovan Mitchell took a personal day today. Uh, from the pictures of the plane, it seemed terrifying. So it's completely understandable that he took that day off. And the Jazz still came out and showed up to play. Clarkson, great game. Conley, great game. Great game from Gobert to beat a Grizzlies team that plays you really tough. John Morant had an incredible game. He's really stepped it up uh, in the uh, last few games. But man, this Jazz team is so good. Um, I've talked about this before. I talked about if they're title contenders or not a lot earlier in the season, but I haven't talked about them as much because I feel like they've solidified themselves as title contenders. I don't think you can look at this Utah Jazz team and how good they've been without thinking, yeah, this team could win a title because they can. Uh, if you say they can't, then I think you're just misjudging them or you're biased against them for some reason or another. They have everything you need to win a title. They have good shooting. They play great defense. You have They have a great coach. And they have some star caliber players. You've got a Rudy Gobert, who is probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year again. I would say he's probably leading the race right now. You have Donovan Mitchell, who continues to be a star. Mike Conley is looking like the player that the Jazz traded for last season, <laughs> showing out tonight against his former team in the Memphis Grizzlies. But this Jazz team is just super deep. They play really tough, and it feels like every possession, they're getting an open look. It's so tough to defend them because everyone can score the ball, and the way that they move the ball and play team basketball, it reminds me a lot of that Atlanta Hawks team that went crazy in the East that one season in 2014-15, where they had four All-Stars, everyone but DeMar Carroll. Shout out to DeMar Carroll, um, the one guy they left out. But they have more star power. And the, the biggest problem with that Hawks team is the lack of star power. They didn't have anyone that could really take over in games. And Donovan Mitchell has shown a capability to do that, especially last season, even in his rookie season against my Thunder, where he uh, helped his team eliminate us in six games. He's shown a capability to step it up in the playoffs and take over. And so I'm not doubting Donovan Mitchell when it comes to the playoffs. I think he's going to step up. Mike Conley has performed in the playoffs before. Uh, Rudy Gobert is a really good player. There are just so many of these different guys that I really think are going to be critical players come playoff time. And I could see the Jazz winning the Western Conference. So that is one threat to win the West right there. Next, we move on to the Phoenix Suns, who right now are the two seed. They also played tonight. They got a winner of the Chicago Bulls. It was pretty back and forth, but the Bull the Suns did end up winning over the Bulls without Zach Levine tonight. Uh, great game from Devin Booker, especially. He had over a 40-point outing. He continues to ball out, and if the Suns manage to take that one seed, I feel like Booker should enter the MVP conversation, either him or Chris Paul. I think the reason that neither of them will win it is because the other one is detracting a little bit too much. Some people put a lot of value on Devin Booker's counting stats, while other people put too much value on, or not too much value, but put more value on Chris Paul's ability to influence a team to win. We saw that with the Thunder last season. We're seeing it with the Suns now. Chris Paul just brings winning basketball wherever he goes and it's very clear that this Suns team is different from last season's in terms of not just talent but in culture they feel like a winning team 
And this is something I've talked about before about the Suns team that really strikes me with how they've played this season. It feels like they've been there before. It feels like they've made many deep runs into the Western Conference, despite not having made the playoffs in a decade. And I think that a lot of that does come from Chris Paul, the mentality he brings. You have a guy like Jay Crowder who also came in off of a finals run with the Miami Heat, coming into the Suns, buying into the system. Each one more, another got pickup. Just the fact that they were able to pick up free agents in general. The fact that people were like, okay, I want to come to the Phoenix Suns. Dario Saric remaining with the team. He's been really critical to them. DeAndre Ayton, despite not having great counting stats, has played some really good basketball. I already talked about Booker. I talked about Chris Paul. Cam Johnson stepped up. Mikal Bridges is really good. The Suns just have, similarly to the Jazz, everything you need to win a championship. They've got, they can play good defense. They've got veteran leadership in a Chris Paul. They've got a great coach in Monty Williams. Whether or not you think he's a great coach is to be debated, but this season he has been a great coach. There's no denying that. And I think he is an underrated coach. You have star level guys, a Chris Paul, I just talked about there, who's been there, done it before. Devin Booker, a young and up and coming star, despite the fact that it feels like he's been in the league for 20 seasons. He's only 24 years old, which is really crazy. He came into the league super young. But the Suns just feel like they can win. Similarly to the Jazz, they play really good team basketball. They get open looks and they have stars that can knock down their shots. And I really feel like if this Suns team clicks when they need to, they could win the West. Winning a title might be tough because I'm not entirely sure if they have the tools to stop like the Nets high powered offense, but they could win the Western Conference. That's two teams that I think could win the West. Then we move on to a team that um, <laughs> just got blown out tonight in the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, obviously, they're not healthy. They lost by um, 15. I couldn't do math there for a second. To the Milwaukee Bucks. Not a terrible outing from them. Andre Drummond's first game as a Laker. He ended up leaving the game with injury. He hurt his toe. I believe he lost a toenail is what it was, and that hurts. I've been there before, but... We know the Lakers can win the title. I don't need to tell you that. Great role players. And when Anthony Davis and LeBron James are healthy, there's not a duo in the league that's better than them. I don't, or at least I don't believe so. We saw that with the finals last season. We saw with their playoff run. And when healthy, this Lakers team, I think, is still the favorite. No matter where they end up in the standings, but that definitely plays a role in it. If this Lakers team keeps losing until... Because LeBron might not be back till the end of April. And we're not sure when Anthony Davis is going to come back. So if the Lakers keep losing like they have... They could fall pretty far because there's a lot of good teams in the West. I'll talk about like the Blazers and the Mavericks, and we could even talk about the Nuggets and the Clippers who have been starting to win a lot more. If this Lakers team keeps losing, they're going to fall far. And I would not be surprised if they enter the playoffs as like a seven, as like a six, seven, eight seed, which first of all should be terrifying to whoever's up there towards the uh, top three seeds in the Western Conference when the playoffs roll around, because if you have to face the Lakers round one, you're in big trouble. But if the Lakers have to face one of the, these tough teams like a Jazz, a Suns, a Clippers, a Nuggets, one of these teams in the first round rather than one of those bottom three, four-ish teams, that's tough. Especially when you combine that with even if they win that series, they then have to play another good team and another good team. And if there's anyone capable of it, it's the Lakers. But coming off of injuries and a really long season last season in the bubble with very little rest, it's tough. Repeating it as a champion is tough, especially when you face all these injuries. Andre Drummond just getting injured in his first game as part of the team. So last season, I personally felt like the Lakers were locked to win the West. I didn't really feel the Clippers hype as much as I do this season. I think the Clippers are much better this season. They're better. They're system works better for the talent they have. I think Tyron Lewis did a great job for that team. I'll get to them in a second. But the last season, I thought the Lakers were a lock. This season, despite them making a lot of good additions in the offseason, I'm not sure they're a lock. I still think they're my favorite when healthy, but they're not a lock. And so that's three teams that can win the Western Conference. Then we could talk about the Trailblazers and the Mavericks, who also played today. Um, two really good teams. I'll get to the Clippers in a second, but they didn't play today, so I'm going to skip over them for right now as the three seed. But the Blazers, 23-point win over the Pistons. Someone on Twitter earlier asked me what I thought the Blazers' ceiling was. And I said probably Western Conference Finals if all the stars align. It just doesn't feel like they have the defense to make it too deep. But the fact that they have Dame, CJ has proven to kind of ball in the playoffs. Yusuf Nurkic, when he's healthy, I think is a great performer. Robert Covington, they have good pieces. And so I think if all the stars align, they can make Western Conference playoffs run. But I don't see them winning the West. I think that's just a little out of the realm of possibility for them right now. They need a little bit more talent, especially on the defensive end of the ball. But that doesn't mean the Blazers are a pushover. Like I said, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Yusuf Nurkic, three really talented players. 
You've got Norman Powell now coming into the mix, who played fan, who's been fantastic for the Raptors all season, and he's coming in hungry, wanting an opportunity to prove himself after being shipped out of Toronto, or I guess you could say Tampa Bay, with the fact that the Raptors have played all their games there this season, at least home games. This team's hungry, and I know Dame wants to prove stuff. We saw how he can ball in the bubble if he really locks in, and he's an MVP candidate. So even though the Blazers, I don't think, are able to win the West right now, they just don't have the ability to stop some of these guys like a LeBron and Anthony Davis. I think they're a threat to win a series and upset someone in that first round if they're a five, a six seed, and I'd be scared to play them second round too. So even though I don't think they can win the West, the Blazers, once again, a very tough team to face in the West, and that also goes to the Dallas Mavericks, who got a five-point win over the Celtics today, mainly because Luka Doncic is insane. I still don't know how he fell to the Mavericks. I don't know what Mark Cuban did to secure Dirk Nowitzki and then Luka Doncic back-to-back, -back, right as one career ends, another one starts, but that's neither here or nor there. Uh, the Mavericks are just really good, and if Porzingis can, can lock in and play good basketball and be consistent, they become super dangerous. We saw that with the Clippers last season. If Porzingis doesn't get hurt, that the Mavericks push that series, I think, to seven games. And in that game seven, anything can happen. This Mavericks team can be get dangerous at times, especially if JJ Reddick comes in and he's able to kind of replicate that Seth Curry role where he's running around screens. He's getting dri uh, dribble handoffs and stuff like that and just lighting it up from three. There's a lot of potential here on this team. Do I think they can win the West? No, I think it's a little too early for them. Luka's still developing, which is crazy to say for a guy that's already as good as he is. But Luke is still super young. Kristaps has shown some inconsistency issues. And until he shows me how consistent he can be and this Mavericks team can kind of step it up on the defensive end, I'm not really sure that they can win the West right now. But once again, with like the Blazers, that doesn't mean I wouldn't be terrified to play them in the first round. And that's another team that I would be scared of. Not even mentioning the Denver Nuggets or the Los Angeles Clippers. I made a whole video about the Denver Nuggets and the Aaron Gordon thing a couple of days ago. If you want to hear more about them, go check out that video. But the Denver Nuggets are really good, and Aaron Gordon adds that defensive tenacity and that extra help that Nikola Jokic has been missing this season. Uh, similar to the role that Jeremy Grant played in the playoffs for the Nuggets last season, he adds a lot to this team. And Gary Harris just wasn't quite playing up to par. You get more minutes for Will Barton, P.J. Dozier, um, Monty Morris could potentially come back at some point. This team's just good. Michael Green's been playing well. You still have Paul Millsap, obviously an MVP candidate, perhaps the MVP favorite at this point in the season, at least statistically. If his record, if the record goes up for the Nuggets, he's probably going to win MVP. That's Nikola Jokic, just backpacking this team up to this point in the season. And Jamal Murray has shown an ability to kind of step it up in the playoffs, especially last season. So this Nuggets team, they've been there, done that before, and they're really dangerous as well. So that's another team. I'm not sure if they could win the West once again. Um, they're close. They're right there on that border, I think, but I'm not sure they're quite there yet, but they're close. They're very close. I think their bench might need a little bit more help. So that's another team that's super dangerous. And that brings me to the Los Angeles Clippers, who I also, once again, I think can win the Western Conference. I think that makes four teams now that I said could win the West. Um, maybe even five if you count the Nuggets, if they're able to catch fire at the right time. Um, this Los Angeles Clippers team is better than last season's. I know at times it doesn't seem like it. They are not playing as well as they have, at least record-wise up to this point, or at least I don't believe they are, but this Clippers team is good. Um, they are talented. They obviously have a great duo in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, multiple-time finals MVP. He's been there. He's done this before, and Paul George, I think, will have a better year in the playoffs this year. I think last year, the bubble thing kind of took a toll on him. He's always been dealing with injuries, but he seemed kind of healthy this season, despite missing some time here and there. I'm hopeful he can kind of get it together. Uh, picking up Rajon Rondo, I don't love that trade, but Rondo does always bring this playoff mentality to him where sometimes he just goes off for no reason in the playoffs, despite not playing well during the season. And so there's a lot to think about there with Rajon Rondo, who could step it up for them. Patrick Beverly will be back. Marcus Morris, Zubak, they brought in DeMarcus Cousins, who might not play that much, but as a third string center, you could do a lot worse. Serge Ibaka was a huge pickup. This team's just better offensively and defensively, I think. if the, When they're hitting their strides, there's a lot of times where this, they still face the inconsistencies that plagued them last season, especially in the playoffs when they blew that 3-1 lead to the Nuggets. But if they're able to hone it all in together, this Clippers team is better than last year's and can definitely win the West. And that makes four teams that can win the West, the Nuggets, who are like right there, and then like the Blazers and the Mavericks, who are super scary. That's seven of the eight teams. 
I think the West is in for a crazy finish this season. I would not surprise if neither of the LA teams make the Western Conference Finals. Um, do I think that they do? Yeah, if I had to pick the Western Conference Finals today, I'm probably going with Lakers Jazz. Or not Lakers Jazz. Um, eh, maybe Lakers Jazz. I'll probably go Lakers Clippers. And that's just because they have the star power. But when you have teams like the Jazz, you have the Suns. Those teams are really, really good. I, I could see either of those teams winning the Western Conference, which is not something I expected to say coming into the season. I think that's been part of what's been so fun about this season is that a lot of things are super up in the air. No one saw this Suns team or this Jazz team being as good as they are. And they have been. And it takes a lot away from um, the whole idea that the league has no parity. Now, are the Nets probably the favorites right now? Yeah, probably. They're stacked. But does that mean that any of these teams could beat them? I mean, potentially. Like, we, we saw, I'll, I'll, I'll shout the Thunder for a second real quick. The Thunder won against the Raptors tonight by 10 points. We had one starter, and it was Teo Maladon. Our starting lineup was Teo Maladon. Um, we had Svi Mikhailuk. We had um, Kenrich Williams, Moses Brown, Isaiah Roby. And we beat the Toronto Raptors with Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr. You know the guys. Anything can happen in this league. Is it different in a seven-game series? Obviously. But... The West feels wide open to me, and I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if that's a mutual feeling. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below, but I just wanted to give a quick talk about the Western Conference, why I think it's super interesting this season, and why, despite the fact that we have our favorites in the Lakers and Nets, if I had to pick the finals right now, it's them. Nothing is guaranteed, especially not in this season where there's COVID, there's no fans, so there's an opportunity for dynamics to shift. There's not as much of a home court advantage and a bunch of talented teams. This is the most talented the NBA probably has ever been. You can argue that all you want, but I think it's true. So look out for the Western Conference, look out for all those teams to win the West, and I'm super excited to see how the season finishes on that side of the bracket. Let me know what you think about this below, and I will see you guys later. Real one, say it back.